This week on Georgia Traveler, we're all about strides and stallions. Hank Aaron Tykov, Phil Necro, we got more down here. You know, I've been waiting on this all day. From the mountains to the coast, Georgia Traveler coming right up. This week, striding out on the gorgeous marshes of Tybee Island with the crew of Sea Kayak Georgia. Combine natural beauty, physical fitness, and maritime education into one daytime excursion, and you get Sea Kayak Georgia. Ronnie Kemp and Marsha Henson are the owners of this unique school of coastal kayaking. They offer rentals, lessons, and guided tours on everything from paddle boards to the classic sea kayak. Ronnie's been at it 35 years, I've been at it 35 minutes. <laughs> so what kind of wildlife can we see out here? We see lots of birds. Um, right here, we're literally where the estuary starts meeting the sea. So we have a lot of overlap here. It's really cool. We've got your birds that you primarily see in the estuary, mixing in with shore birds. Gonna pa pass really close to one of our little buddies right here. Oh yeah, a pelican Isn't that passed beautiful? by. Oh my gosh. No great white sharks, right? Not right Nothing now. Nothing coming from underneath to uh, <laughs> no, take not, care of us. Probably not today. In the winter, when the whales are here offshore. The great okay. whites follow them south. Wow, okay. Our destination today was Little Tybee Island. No hotels, no restaurants, just a few nature lovers, fishermen, and prehistoric local inhabitants. So right here in front of us, we've got a maritime forest. We've got a salt marsh. We've got a beach. We've got a dune system. We've got a barrier island over there. We've got a hammock right there. Wow. So all of the elements that make up the coast of Georgia, just in this one little cross section, we could, we could just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper, seeing how everything fits and works together. Now getting here was the fun part. Marsha and Ronnie took me on the back route to Little Tybee. The water was high, allowing us to glide through the calming estuaries right off Tybee's back river. When the tide comes up, it has to have somewhere to go. So it floods into the land, creating all of these twisting, winding channels, which this, this right here where we are at low tide, there'll be no water here. Zero wow. water, okay. nothing. After our little Tybee landing, we took on a tasty afternoon snack, explored the island, and even caught a Coast Guard training rescue over a part of the coast known as the Triangle. This is an ebb tide delta where the river meets the ocean and the sandbar, creating a little more of an unpredictable, high adrenaline kayaking experience that Ronnie, of course, talked me into. See you there. Well, as we were paddling along out there, we were, we were using some uh, braces. We used our paddle to put our, put our paddle down flat on the water to keep us from falling over. We used a good forward stroke to pick up speed. You remember when we were riding those waves today? That was fun out there today. I mean, I could do that every day. Matter of fact, I do it every day. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Riding waves, cruising tranquil estuaries, and enjoying the best of Georgia's protected waters make Sea Kayak Georgia an incomparable adventure. And keep in mind, even on the hottest days of a South Georgia summer, Tybee's back river breeze helps keep you cool. See you on the water. Let's now journey with Christine to Lafayette as she gallops to the land of Paradise Arabians. Welcome to Paradise, a 400-acre forested farm right here in North Georgia, where you leave your troubles behind back on those paved roads and your new friends await you here, both human and animal alike. 
With rolling hills of green, green grass and the peaceful sounds of nature surrounding them in their retirement years, it's easy to see why owners Gary and Wanda Kenworthy named their home Paradise. But what is not as easily apparent is what this couple decided to do with their land as a little retirement project. Well, we were empty nesters and Gary loves horses and I love Gary. 20 years ago, I was silly enough to think that if I got on the phone and went down the Dalton telephone book and called, cold called and invited people to come to the farm, see the horses that they would buy, and they did. And that little project turned into a center for a horse breed called Straight Egyptian Arabians, one of the most rare, sought after, and valuable breeds in the world. One of your horses out there is uh, quite valuable. Which one are we? Scapa. And how much is Scapa? We have Scapa insured for over three years. And who insures Scapa? Lloyd's of London. Wow. So, how did these exotically named horses get to little old Lafayette, Georgia? Well, Egyptian Arabians have a fascinating history, starting far, far away when 1,100 of these guys were moved from the Arabian Peninsula over to Egypt. How did this ancient breed, such a regal breed, hello honey, uh, make it from the Middle East to here in Georgia? Well, it was a man named Muhammad Ali the Great that acquired most of these horses, at least the, the progenitors of these horses. And it wasn't until the early 1900s that they started being imported to the United States. So from there to here, there's only about 6,000 straight Egyptian Arabians in the entire world today. And Paradise Arabians cares exclusively for this rare breed, all direct descendants of the originals. And that fine lineage equals some fine trophies, including the prestigious Champion Rose Blanket. Paradise beat out about 20 other countries to win this award. They have very expressive faces, beautiful concavity between the eye and the, no and the nostril. We refer to that as a dish. These straight Egyptian horse or the Arabian horse in general should be between 14-1 and 15-1 hands tall. They also have this playful attitude. They absolutely love human attention, human interaction. They sure do. These paradise-bred horses carry on the grand tradition of their great-great-great-great-great-grandparents in horse history, as well as some of the most prominent figures in human history, too. Genghis Khan, Napoleon, Alexander the Great, George Washington, Ronald Reagan, and me. We all have something in common. We all choose to ride Arabians. Well, maybe they didn't need somebody leading, but hey, you get the idea. And the name dropping doesn't end there. We've got movie stars, uh, politicians, kings and sheiks. I mean, it's not just here in the United States. This is a global business, global industry. The King of Morocco even gave Wanda a special gift, the Gold Stirrup, a very prestigious award in the horse industry. But after all the hobnobbing, it's time to get back to paradise and get the hands dirty again. Gary and Wanda have great help from their trainers, Amy and Rich. It's kind of fun being the first person to ever get on a horse's back because it's a whole new kind of trusting that we get to do in bonds and stuff like that. And as part of the training, Paradise likes to say they train the humans too. What I always say is it's like, you know, a horse is speaking one language and a person is speaking another language. And training them, you know, it's just trying to make them speak the same language. That's what these owners are learning now and getting that expert training they may someday need for competitions. And this owner is known as the Sweet Tea Lady because one of her horses, Tap Dancer, is a true southerner and will only drink sweet tea. Dancer, would you like some tea? Every owner is taught the paradise method of love, kindness, and patience and to appreciate their horse's unique personality. They have anywhere from 100 to 150 Arabians here at any given time. And the best part is, hi, honey. They each have different personalities. This is Alanika. She is two years old and she loves carrots. I'm so sorry. I'll get you another one, I promise. Just like in two-legged families, this four-legged family has a bunch of characters. Like Fanola's Jamila, she's a princess. Eureka Zakai is always playful. And Stara's Jazeera, well, she is being groomed for greatness and is always full of energy. But after they've been raised and trained here in paradise, these future stars often move on to their new homes with their new owners. It is always hard for Gary and Wanda to say goodbye. Next, we head to Macon and explore the Hall of Fame of Georgia's greatest sports legends and memorable moments. Here we are in the jewel of central Georgia. Welcome to Macon. 
historic homes line the streets and the tunes of Otis Redding and the Allman Brothers Band are just a few songs from Georgia artists that fill the air. But did you know that Macon is also the center of sports history in Georgia? Because it's here you'll find the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame. This 43,000 square foot state-of-the-art museum houses over 3,000 artifacts and is the country's largest state sports museum. Hey, Hank Aaron Tycob, Phil Necro, we got more down here. That's right. Managing director Ben Sapp gave me a tour starting with their most recent Hall of Fame inductees. Reggie Wilkes played at Southwest High School in Atlanta, then played for Georgia Tech. I went on to a great professional career with the Eagles and with the Atlanta Falcons. Priceless memorabilia from UGA, Georgia Tech, the Falcons, Braves, Hawks, and even tributes to legendary Georgia golfers, including the incomparable Bobby Jones. I like to say he's the greatest golfer of all time. Not too many people would argue with that. Now this is amazing. This is the Greek goddess Nike, uh, spelled N-I-K-E, like Nike. Okay. Uh, okay. It's the goddess of victory. The original of this statue is actually in marble and it's in the Louvre. This is uh, a bronze cast in gold leaf. It is missing a head. Uh, when it was discovered, it was broken into over 180 pieces. They pieced it back together. She's missing her arms uh, and her head, uh, but even with those uh, uh, missing, this is still considered one of the very best examples of ancient Greek sculpture uh, anywhere. Fantastic. If you got wings, I guess it's okay not to have arms, right? That's right. The, 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 wings, the wings are sufficient. Yeah. But it's the interactive experience that draws sports fans like me. A chance to pull a hamstring while pretending you still have the agility of a young athlete. Do a little juke crossover. No dunking. And of course you have the football skills challenge. Throw it through and kick it up and over. Not gonna try that again. <laughs> and my favorite part, a chance to become an announcer and call a great moment in Georgia sports history, I chose the Sid Bream slide of 1991. Swing line drive left field. One run is in. Here comes Bream. Here's the throw to the plate. And... Win. It's good till the ending. All right. Interesting, impressive, and of course, embarrassing moments are to be had at the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame. So when in Macon, stop on by and learn about some Peach State greats. All right, ready to go to work. Let's saddle up in Madison at the Southern Cross Guest Ranch with a man named Phil and a horse named Cowboy. Ah yeah, it's a beautiful morning with sunlight streaking through the trees, galloping horses, and the temperature is just right. So where can you enjoy an extraordinary day such as this? Southern Cross Guest Ranch. Welcome to Southern Cross Ranch, please come in. This family-owned and operated horse farm has been raising horses for over 25 years and welcoming guests to their dude ranch for over 10 years. Inga Wedling, the owner and president, runs the ranch with her sons Nolan and Lance Van Reenen and her daughter Yvonne, along with adopted family member Jim Fox, who also manages the ranch. It's all under one roof, um, and people say they have the greatest vacation ever because they were able to relax and enjoy themselves. Good times and a little relaxation is just what I was looking for here at the ranch, and it all starts with the guest house. We have 16 rooms, and they start with level one, which is an entry level, which is a basic room, king size bed, bathroom, television, etc. Then from that on, it goes to the second level, third, fourth, up to the fifth level. That is the most luxurious level, and they're very nicely appointed, and they're all different. We are currently in the cattle baron room, which is one of our top rooms. I think you might see the fireplace behind me over there. This room also has a bath with double jacuzzi, antiques, very nice room. I would say you look around this room, cattle baron sort of uh, encapsulates it. We have more Western themes, Southern, genteel kind of themed rooms. Every room's different, different size, different feel, different area of the house. It's kind of like a bed and breakfast on steroids. Inga makes sure her guests get three delicious meals a day. 
Just listen for the bell and you know what time it is. We cook a very international type fare. You can expect to have German food here, American food, Indian food, Thai food, Italian food, French food, Chinese food, you name it. We fix it. After you've eaten to your heart's content, time to work it off. Take a stroll to the barn and enjoy horseback riding. In fact, people from all over come to ride these Georgia trails. We have a lot of international clientele, lots of Europeans, and even from countries that you don't usually run into. Just about every country in Europe has been here, including from Russia. My name is Sandra and I'm from London, England. Experiencing the Western Saddle, that's the first time I've, I've done that, and also the countryside is stunning. And being able to walk amongst all the horses, that's a new experience for me. Okay, Lance, you told me there's a procedure that we have to go through that everybody goes through. Yes, sir. Well, you're going to tell me your experience, mm -hmm. and I'm going to basically just give you a horse based on what you tell me. Um, so how much experience do you have? Well, I'm uh, what you call an intermediate rider. I'm going to put you on cowboy. 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 That's what I'm talking about. Hang on. I can prove that. Uh, yes. All right, partner. Cowboy. Big Phil about to jump on cowboy. We about to do some serious riding over here at the Southern Cross Ranch. Come on with me. See what we do. So with lead rope in tow, I head to the barn to pick up my trusted steed, Cowboy. Hey, baby. What's happening? You know, I've been waiting on this all day, man. They told me you were the bomb. I met back up with Lance to learn how to get better acquainted with my horse, Cowboy. What we're doing here is we're just trying to get all the loose dirt and debris off of their back okay. and in the girth area. When you brush, you want to go with the hair. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take it like this and just flick it away. All right. And these are big animals. So you're not going to hurt them by brushing. They actually like this, OK? And you also said this is actually good because it gets me and all the other people riding a chance to kind of bond with our horse. Exactly. All you right. know. You know, before you start riding, you, you have a little few minutes here to get acquainted with your horse. And no, I want my horse to be acquainted. They get acquainted with you, and they enjoy this part. I hope this horse is enjoying this. Now the cowboy and I are on the same page, I saddled up and headed for the trails. Cowboy, Lance, and I trotted through these lush wooded trails enjoying the beauty of backcountry Madison. There's about 220 acres. We have a little over 200 horses. Well, we have some really nice wooded uh, trails here on the property. A uh, stream runs through the property as well. But that's just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do here at the Dude Ranch. In addition to the horseback riding, we have a pool, hot tub, game room, which is billiards and darts and shuffleboard, foosball, etc. Horseshoes, of course, you can have a, a Dude Ranch in a horseshoe pit. Our guests like to ride our mountain bikes anywhere on or off the property. That includes on the horseback trails uh, when we're not running the horses out there. Hiking and such, basketball, plenty to do. Thank you, Mother, and your brothers for me and everybody. I really appreciate it. And uh, I always want to say this, but let's hit the dusty trail. Well, let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's join Ashley at our coolest campus in Carrollton where wolves roam the streets and visitors can explore the great beyond. You've spotted the publicity encouraging you to go west, but what's actually here at the University of West Georgia in Carrollton? Well, let's just say it's a wild, wild west. Oh! As evidenced by the local wildlife. This wolf is one of a pack of nine on campus, better known as the Howl for UWG Community Art Project. Meet Dances with Wolves himself, creator Clint Samples. Designers, uh, local artists, we have art alumni, we have current art students, and we also have elementary school kids that participated in the project from Carrollton Elementary School. This wolf here was actually designed by uh, one of the students there. Unlike their living counterparts, these wolves are actually pretty easy to hunt down on campus. The Coliseum, the bookstore on the square, posted like a sentinel at the bank, even this montage of the athletics course at the football stadium by artist Steve Penley. We want to be significant, so all the designs somehow or another relate back to the community. My, what big eyes you have. But wanderers fear not. These oh, yeah, wolves are all bark, no bite, in their fiberglass form. There's no greater feeling than being one with the wolf pack. You can travel with the pack too, using the green belt. 
Forming a 16-mile loop around the bustling city of Carrollton, the Green Belt connects a 1.7-mile track of UWG's campus to the city's parks, schools, and shopping. Riding like the wind in the UWG wilderness, it was finally time to confront the biggest, baddest wolves out there, UWG's nationally decorated competitive cheerleading squads. That was wild. Never seen anything like that. Determination, motivation, and cohesiveness is really what we're all about. Our all-girls squad won nationals last year, and it was huge for us. Between July and March, these squads train and perform for public enjoyment. We definitely post any appearances that we're going to be doing online at uwgsports.com. We do many performances around the state of Georgia. There is no charge ever to come watch us. What's it like being in the presence of an all-girl and co-ed cheerleading squad who have 16 national titles between them in just over 10 years? Fun. A lot of fun. Do a lot of showy stuff. We do baskets and stuff. Like we're throwing people Woo! like probably two or three people high and they're flipping and spinning, which is not what everyday people do in their spare time. Daredevils that they are, these athletes decided to resurrect my high school cheerleading skills from the grave. And oh, was it death to find? If we could do this in super slow turtle motion, yeah, we are. We are. that would be great. Ready, one, two. Mm. Not that high. <laughs> Woo, Georgia Traveler! No! No cradling! <laughs> oh, they don't take no for an answer. Finding myself outperformed by these star athletes, I left them working toward another national title to gaze upon star power I found to be less formidable. The University of West Georgia Observatory has been a sight to behold since 1979. The center of this solar system? Dr. Bob Powell, a professor launching his 47th year at the college, and a man whose humor and wisdom are as infinite as his subject area. The observatory is our window to the rest of the universe. To have a telescope pointed towards the Andromeda galaxy, to have photons that left that galaxy a few million years ago be captured by the nerve endings is an experience. This window to the universe comes souped up with a custom 16-foot diameter rotating dome Somewhere. and a computerized telescope. We do have these public observations as well as observations for special groups and for special occasions to look at whatever is visible in the sky. Halley's Comet, of course, was something that was visible in 1985-1986. And during that season, we had uh, at least 30 observations and over 3,000 people came to see us. Another big attraction occurred in August of 2003 when Mars was unusually close and we had people that stood in line for an hour and a half. At this point, I was eager to space out with the rest of UWG's stargazers. Okay, Dr. Powell, what am I gonna see in here? How do I use this? Thing? All right, as you look at the moon, you can see the three, the three principal types of topographic features. Uh, the light colored areas are highlands. Uh, sometimes people refer to them as mountains. The dark circle areas are mare and then, of course, the small circle areas are impact craters. After advancing through the ooh and ah laid moments characteristic of this experience, Dr. Powell concluded my tour with Saturn and Venus. This is where I made my one and only stellar addition to the dialogue. Women are from Venus. So cozy up to one of the observatory's three telescopes during its scheduled monthly observations and see the universe with your own lenses. Just beware of those things that go bump in the night. This is the wild, wild west after all. How about that? Wolf! How about that? Wolf! How about that? That's all for the Strides and Stallions episode of Georgia Traveler. Until next time, pleasant journeys.
Georgia Traveler is produced in partnership with the Georgia Department of Economic Development. This is a GPB original production.